Meanwhile, Deputy National Security Advisor KT McFarland is being reassigned from her job after less than three months and is likely to be nominated as ambassador to Singapore. The former Fox News commentator was brought on by Michael Flynn, who was forced out in February. Since then, there has been an ongoing severing of Flynn's ties to the National Security Council, what's being called a Flynn erasure, led by National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. There's also reportedly a nickname going around the intel community. Uh, mm. Okay, and the White House for the holdovers from Michael Flynn's short tenure as National Security Advisor, Flintstones, because they're a page right out of history. But um, but <laughs> I'm just telling well, you what the heck. So, Meet if we look at what's happening inside the White House right now, whether it's Steve Bannon being taken off the NSC, whether it's, of course, Michael Flynn being replaced by McMaster, KT McFarland being taken off, Dina Powell going in, McMaster looking for a replacement for KT McFarland, a measured response to what happened in Syria Thursday night. Uh, over, at least since Thursday, there are a lot of people in the foreign policy community that have breathed a temporary, 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 I say, sigh of relief. It, it, it looks like governing. And yes. that's something we haven't seen a whole lot of. Rather than campaigning, rather than posturing, it looks like governing. And I realize it's, 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 you know, it's just one episode or, or a couple of data points you had there. But yeah, people are feeling a little bit more comfortable. The Democratic response was in some ways more interesting than the Republican response to the use of force against, against Syria. All these people essentially who work for President Obama distancing themselves from their, from their former from President from their former Obama. Boss. Yeah, exactly. But no, you are beginning to see things. I think the next big thing... Can, can you tell me really quickly yes. there, because that was so fast and John Kerry came out immediately in support of what Donald Trump did Hillary Clinton. You, you had uh, yeah Hillary Clinton did you had you had other people saying uh, saying some things that were almost disloyal to Barack Obama saying we could have never moved this quickly he would have never moved why were they doing that why did they all come out in force and do that well, there was a lot of frustration. There was a sense that the Obama presidency was a bit of a paralysis by analysis. And in some ways, it was such a tight center. It was the president, Ben Rhodes, and a few others who then afterwards tried to make the case that what they did was a solution to the chemical problem in, in Syria when everybody knows it wasn't. No, history is going to be rough on this. This is going to be the defining moment for the Obama presidency. And what is so interesting about it, it's going to be a moment of inaction. And it proves the point that what you don't do can matter every bit as much as what you do when you, when you govern. And I think all these people, one disagreed at the time, they're probably thinking about their, their, their futures. But uh, essentially it showed also that President Obama was something of a departure from the democratic foreign policy national security mainstream, which are, which are tougher than And you. Mike, we can say this now that they're out of office. We had people close to John Kerry, people close to Joe Biden, clo people close to a lot of the uh, foreign policy leaders, extraordinarily frustrated mm. in expressing the frustration of those principles, of John Kerry, of Joe Biden, of all the president's men and women. Uh, and I think even Susan Rice, who wanted to respond to the first chemical weapon attack. Yeah. Look, I, I am a huge fan of thoughtfulness in presidencies, and President Obama was quite thoughtful about everything. Syria was a serious mistake that the Obama administration made in, in retrospect, don't you think? Well, they thought themselves out of action. I mean, basically, at some point, you, you, and what happens is you look at every option for doing something, oh, that's difficult, that's risky, that's flawed. They never looked nearly as systematically as, of the, at the option of not doing something and what would be the costs and risks of inaction. And, and, and the story, we spoke about this at the time, the story of that Friday night, I believe it was a Friday night in August of 2013, when the Secretary of State had made quite a remarkable speech earlier that day about using force in Syria because this could no longer continue. That, that, Syrian gas had been used. You, you, you talk, yeah, for people, um, John Kerry. You're talking about John Kerry at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. And then I am told that they were within an hour of releasing those missiles that evening when the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and Dennis McDonough, his chief of staff, walked the White House lawn late at night and changed the policy with, with no really communication with 
with the Secretary of State Kerry or with others in the administration. That are, are there anybody in the NSC? No, it's also the danger of doing foreign policy in an ad hoc way, and it ought to be a lesson for any future president. There's a reason sometimes you have you have process, you have the interagency system, and what, indeed one of the challenges for this administration is still they've got to flesh out an interagency system. System they still don't have the bodies in place yeah. at state and defense, so they may have had an okay day the other day, but they cannot go through four years, much less four more months, essentially without a group of people to make policy and carry it out. The, the story's still being written of all of this. This is, a, this is a work in progress, but I think two things happened that were pretty significant for this foreign policy team. One is they acted decisively, and they proved that they could move in a way with American force that sends a message to the world, and that's something that was important to the president. The other is, Richard's right, of course there need to be a lot more people there, but you saw now a national security advisor, secretary of, of state, and a UN ambassador who got on the world stage and although there are some contradictions being seen in what they said, all three of them proved that they could go out and represent the administration. I'm gonna you've say not also, seen that, you've Russia, not seen that finally. in any other cabinet department in the domestic side I've yet. I've got to say also, the, 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 the contrast also between what they did uh, Thursday, and again, for everybody waiting to pounce at home, we're talking about Thursday night. We're not gonna tell you what's gonna happen this Thursday night, right. you know what? We could be watching them all playing putt pot, putt putt in Mozambique. I, I, who, who knows what they're going to be doing this next Thursday night? But last Thursday night, you also had the President of the United States getting advice from his Secretary of Defense right. and following it, getting advice from his National Security Advisor and following it, instead of, quite frankly, what happened last time. And I'm, we're only talking about Syria, where you had. And by the way, we heard this from principals for years, the complaint that Barack Obama and Ben Rhodes mm. would make U.S. foreign policy, and sometimes they would call in Dennis McDonough, but they would not take the, the uh, reasoned advice of their Secretary of State or Secretary of Defense. They did not Defense, want to go to war. Or National Security Council. This was the president who wanted to get us out right. of war. But, 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 but even there, it's dangerous. We were, we've been talking about the interagency process for the executive order that Steve Bannon wrote up and shoved oh through goodness. without taking advice from them. This is what happened with Barack Obama's foreign policy for eight years. And again, I'm not condemning the whole eight years. I'm just telling everybody what yeah. we all know around the table. When the history is written, one of the Syria is going to be, to be at the top of the list of his mistakes. And procedurally, uh, he is going to be attacked for uh, basically blowing up the interagency process and just having one or two people very close to him in the White House making all the decisions on foreign policy. Yeah, and, and look, as, as Richard has pointed out, if, if this is a one-off and it continues the way it had been continuing prior to last week's missile launch, then, you know, President Trump will be, will be judged pretty much the same way that President Obama has been generated. Yeah, you, you know, you shot off 59 missiles, but one of the factors the positive factors uh, of what happened last week, I've been told by two different people over the weekend, is the impact it has had on our allies in the region, on Egypt, on Bahrain, on the UAE, on Turkey, uh, in Israel to some extent, that they're saying, ah. Well, not, well, not only, also Great Britain, Canada, yeah. Australia, the outpouring of support from allies across the globe that yeah. We are acting. Yeah. And again, I, I, Richard, we're not talking about sending 500,000 boots on the ground. Could you, could you explain to people at home that say, oh, listen to them. There, was one or, there were one or two people other than the alt-writers, uh, but they're basically one or two so-called media columnists who said that the media was cheering a march toward just like 2003, which basically that is logic for Ann Coulter and the alt-right, uh, that's not what happened at all Thursday uh, night, is it? Explain, explain this was, this was a, uh, how th there is 
uh, actually degrees of Right, this entire spectrum or menu of possibilities. This was a discreet action in response to a use of chemical weapons to basically say no one can use chemical weapons or any weapon of mass destruction with impunity and get off cost free. This was not, repeat not, this president and this administration jumping in with both feet to transform Syria, to become a party to the Syrian civil war, to bring about the immediate ouster of this government. This was something limited and discreet. If anything, there'll probably be people who will say this was, this was too modest, but they've got time to flesh out the rest of the policy. This was an action, but it was, it was circumscribed. It was bounded. It was no more and no less than it was. All right, still ahead on Morning Joe, a terrorist attack on Palm Sunday. Twin blasts shake the Christian community in Egypt. Egypt and confidence in President El Sisi. From the Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Cory Gardner, filmmaker Sebastian Younger, and with his powerful new project on Syria, political analyst Elise Jordan, and former ambassador to Sweden, Mark Brzezinski, on the Stockholm attack. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.